What makes the Gothic genetic story particularly fascinating is how it challenges our modern concepts of ethnicity and identity. The Goths weren't simply a biological population that maintained genetic isolation as they migrated across Europe. Instead, they were a dynamic confederation that absorbed new peoples and genetic lineages at every stage of their journey. This genetic fluidity reveals that Gothic identity was as much about shared political allegiance and cultural practices as it was about biological descent. The genetic evidence strongly supports the traditional account of Gothic origins in southern Scandinavia. DNA analysis from Iron Age burials in Gotland and Gotland, dating from approximately 100 BC to 200 AD, reveals a population with distinctive genetic markers that would later appear along Gothic migration routes. The male lineages, traced through Y-chromosome analysis, show a population dominated by haplogroup I1, which originated among Scandinavian hunter-gatherers, and remains most common in Nordic countries today. This marker appeared in roughly 40% of males in these early burials, accompanied by haplogroup R, 1B, U, 106, in about 25% of samples, a lineage associated with Germanic-speaking peoples across northern Europe. These genetic signatures became traceable markers of Gothic migration. When similar Y chromosome patterns appear in later burials hundreds of miles to the south, they provide biological confirmation of population movement. The persistence of these Scandinavian markers in Gothic burials, from Poland, Ukraine, and eventually Spain and Italy, demonstrates remarkable genetic continuity despite centuries of migration and cultural change. The first major transformation of Gothic genetic identity occurred during their establishment of the wheelbark culture in present-day Poland, beginning around 100 AD. Genetic analysis of wheelbark cemeteries reveals a population maintaining approximately 75-80% to 80 Scandinavian ancestry in its early phases. The Y-chromosome profiles from sites like Kowalewko and Pruszczgdanski closely match those from Gotland, with the Scandinavian I1 lineage appearing at 30-35% to 35 frequency, compared to less than 2%, in the preceding local Pszewórsk culture. Female lineages tell a different story of integration and adaptation. Mitochondrial DNA, inherited through the maternal line, shows that while early wheelbark women were predominantly of Scandinavian origin, carrying lineages common in Nordic populations, this changed rapidly over successive generations. By the later wheelbark period, around 200 to 300 AD, only 35% of female lineages showed Scandinavian origin, with the majority now reflecting local Polish and Baltic ancestry. This pattern indicates systematic intermarriage between Gothic men and local women, a process that would continue throughout Gothic history. The wheelbark genetic profile includes an unexpected element that provides insight into the inclusive nature of Gothic society. Approximately 5-8% to of males in wheelbark burials carried haplogroup G2A, a lineage associated with early Neolithic farmers rather than Germanic populations. This lineage was rare in Scandinavia, suggesting that groups carrying this marker joined the Gothic Confederation during its early migration phase. The persistence and even expansion of this lineage within Gothic populations demonstrates that membership in Gothic society was not restricted to those of pure Scandinavian descent. Chemical analysis of bones and teeth provides additional evidence for Gothic migration patterns. Strontium isotope ratios, which reflect the geological environment where individuals spent their childhood versus their final years, reveal that approximately 40% of adults in wheelbark cemeteries were first-generation migrants. Oxygen isotope values confirm origins in colder climates consistent with Scandinavia, while carbon and nitrogen isotopes document dietary shifts from marine-based Scandinavian diets to the terrestrial diets of inland Poland. The eastern branch of the wheelbark culture, known as the Maswomech group, developed distinctive genetic characteristics that presaged later Gothic diversity. Ancient DNA from Maswomanch burials reveals the highest genetic diversity of any early Gothic population, including not only Scandinavian lineages, but significant frequencies of haplogroups associated with Slavic, Baltic, and even populations of ultimate Siberian origin. This Eastern Gothic branch appears to have been particularly open to incorporating diverse peoples, establishing patterns that would define Gothic confederation building. The movement of Gothic populations into the territories of modern Ukraine and Moldova marked a fundamental transformation in their genetic composition. By 250 AD, the Goths had become central to the Chernyakiv culture, and genetic analysis reveals a population dramatically different from their Scandinavian ancestors. 
while maintaining a Germanic core evident in 25-30% to of male lineages, carrying I1 and R1b U106, Chernyakiv populations show extensive admixture with steppe peoples. Iranian-speaking nomads, particularly Sarmatians and Alans, contributed substantially to the Chernyakiv Gothic gene pool. Haplogroup R1 AZ93, strongly associated with these steppe populations, appears at 20% frequency in Chernyakiv males. Additional steppe ancestry comes from lineages associated with earlier Scythian populations, demonstrating that the Goths incorporated not just contemporary nomad groups, but also descendants of earlier steppe empires. Genome-wide analysis of Chernyakiv individuals reveals the full extent of this population mixing. Ancestry component analysis indicates that the average Chernyakiv Goth was approximately 45% Scandinavian or Germanic in ancestry, 30% Sarmatian or Alan, 15% local Ukrainian, and 10% Balkan. This mixture was not uniform across society. Elite burials with rich grave goods typically show higher proportions of Scandinavian ancestry, reaching 60 to 70%, while common burials show more balanced proportions of different ancestries. The Hunnic invasions of the late 4th century created a genetic bottleneck traceable in Gothic populations. Pre-Hunnic Chernyakiv cemeteries show genetic continuity across generations, with family relationships detectable through DNA analysis. After 375 AD, this continuity breaks down dramatically. New cemeteries established in the Carpathian Basin show populations that are 70% descended from evacuated Chernyakiv groups, but 30% local, indicating rapid integration of refugees with existing populations as the Goths fled westward. Gothic groups entering the Roman Empire as refugees carried genetic profiles shaped by three centuries of migration and admixture. Late 4th century burials in Pannonia, associated with Gothic fuderati, barbarian soldiers serving Rome, reveal males maintaining typical Gothic Y-chromosome signatures, including Scandinavian I1. However, autosomal DNA revealing ancestry from across the genome shows additional admixture acquired during their flight through the Balkans. The division between Visigoths and Ostrogoths, while politically and historically significant, shows minimal genetic differentiation. Statistical analysis of Gothic burials from Spain versus Italy reveals overlapping genetic clusters with only minor differences in ancestry proportions. Both groups maintained similar mixtures of Scandinavian, Central European, Steppe, and Mediterranean ancestry, confirming that the split was primarily political rather than ethnic. The genetic similarity between these theoretically distinct Gothic groups underscores the fluid nature of barbarian identities in the late Roman period. Visigothic settlement in the Iberian Peninsula provides exceptional data on how barbarian elites integrated with Roman provincial populations. The cemetery of Pla de Lorta in Catalonia has yielded genomic data from 24 individuals spanning the 5th to 7th centuries. Early burials from 450 to 500 AD show individuals with 70% Northern European ancestry, carrying Y-chromosome lineages absent from earlier Iberian populations. By the late Visigothic period, around 600 to 650 AD, the genetic profile had transformed dramatically. Northern European ancestry in elite burials dropped to 30%, while typical Iberian lineages became dominant. This rapid genetic assimilation occurred even as Visigothic law codes attempted to maintain distinctions between Goths and Romans. The genetic evidence reveals that biological mixing proceeded regardless of legal barriers, with intermarriage quickly diluting the distinctive Gothic genetic signature. The cemetery of Colegno in northern Italy, while primarily associated with Lombards, provides insight into family structures during the migration period that likely applied to Gothic groups as well. Genomic analysis reveals complex, multi-generational families, including a three-generation patrilineal dynasty. Cross-generational comparison shows progressive dilution of Northern European ancestry. The founding generation had 80% Northern ancestry, their children 60%, and grandchildren only 40%. This pattern of rapid genetic assimilation through intermarriage appears consistent across barbarian settlements in the former Roman Empire. The material culture of the Goths, revealed through archaeological excavations across Europe, provides remarkable insights into their dress, artistic traditions, and cultural practices. Archaeological evidence from Gothic burials reveals distinctive patterns in dress and personal ornamentation that evolved throughout their migrations. 
Women's burials in particular shared very close similarities with veal bark forms, buried with two fibulae, one on each shoulder. This practice of wearing paired fibulae, brooches, became a hallmark of Gothic female dress, serving both functional and decorative purposes in fastening garments at the shoulders. The fibulae themselves represent some of the finest examples of Gothic metalwork. The so-called Gothic group of bow fibulae have a round or triangular flat head plate, often with three, five or seven knobs, a small arched bow and a long flat diamond shaped foot. They were widely used by the Germanic Visigoths, Ostrogoths and Gepids and the non-Germanic Slavs and Avars and are found over a wide part of southern and western Europe in the 5th and 6th centuries AD. These distinctive brooches became markers of Gothic identity across their territories. The aquiliform, eagle-shaped fibulae that have been discovered in necropolises such as Duraton, Madrona or Castiltiera, cities of Segovia, are an unmistakable example of the Visigothic presence in Spain. These fibulae were used individually or in pairs, as clasps or pins in gold, bronze and glass to join clothes, showing the work of the goldsmiths of Visigothic Hispania. The eagle motif, originally a Roman imperial symbol, was adopted by the Goths as a representation of power and status, demonstrating their cultural synthesis. Gothic dress incorporated various materials and techniques. Funerary gifts often include fibulae, belt buckles, bone combs, glass drinking vessels and other jewellery. Belt buckles, particularly among the Visigoths, became elaborate status symbols. The Visigothic belt buckles, a symbol of rank and status characteristic of Visigothic women's clothing, are also notable as works of goldsmithery. Some pieces contain exceptional Byzantine-style lapis lazuli inlays, and are generally rectangular in shape, with copper alloy, garnets and glass. The presence of bone combs in Gothic burials indicates attention to personal grooming and appearance. These combs, often intricately carved with geometric patterns, appear consistently across Gothic territories from Poland to Spain, suggesting shared cultural practices in hairstyling and personal hygiene. The materials used, bone, antler and occasionally imported ivory, reflect both local resources and long-distance trade connections. Gothic art reached its highest expression in metalwork, particularly in the technique of cloisonné. This technique is characterised by inlaid, semi-precious stones. In fact, the word cloisonné literally means partitioned in French. The artisan would solder wires onto a metal base and fill the areas those wires created with stones. This technique, while not invented by the Goths, was perfected and widely employed in their workshops. One of the most notable aspects of Visigothic crafts is its golden metalwork and jewellery. The most known example is the treasure of Guarazar, a collection of crowns and crosses discovered in Guadamur. These pieces utilise goldsmithing and cloisonné techniques. The Guarazar treasure, dating to the 7th century, represents the pinnacle of Visigothic artistic achievement, combining Germanic metalworking traditions with Byzantine influences and Christian symbolism. Gothic metalworkers demonstrated remarkable skill in various techniques. They mastered filigree work, creating delicate wire patterns soldered onto metal surfaces. Granulation, the application of tiny gold spheres to create decorative patterns, appears on high-status objects. The use of garnets, often imported from India or Sri Lanka, indicates extensive trade networks. These red stones were typically cut flat and set in gold cells, creating a distinctive aesthetic that spread across barbarian Europe. These stunning objects demonstrate the remarkable skill of barbarian metal workers during the early Middle Ages. The technical proficiency required for such work suggests specialised workshops and long apprenticeships, indicating a sophisticated craft organisation within Gothic society. Gothic burial customs provide insights into their social organization and beliefs. Like in the real bark culture, Chernyakov burials usually lack weapons as funerary gifts, except in a few cremation burials reminiscent of Przeworsk influences. This absence of weapons in graves, unusual for Germanic peoples, may reflect religious beliefs or social regulations about the afterlife. Of the inhumation burials, the dead were usually buried in a north-south axis, with head to north although a minority are in east-west orientation. The standardization of burial orientation suggests shared religious or cosmological beliefs across Gothic communities. The shift from predominantly cremation burials in early Gothic culture to inhumation in later periods reflects changing religious influences, particularly the adoption of Christianity. The differentiation in grave goods reflects social stratification. Elite burials contain imported goods, 
elaborate jewellery, and prestigious items like glass vessels and silver plate. Common burials have simpler grave goods, pottery, simple bronze fibulae, and iron tools. This material distinction provides evidence for a hierarchical society with significant wealth differences. Visigothic architecture is characterised by high-quality masonry, frequent use of stone vaulting, and the horseshoe arch. Buildings typically incorporated a basilican plan with a short and wide elevation, as seen in the church of San Juan Bautista at Baños de Cerrato, 661 AD. Gothic settlements show evolution from scattered farmsteads in the Wheelbark period to more nucleated villages in the Chernyakiv culture, and finally to integration with existing Roman urban centres in the Visigothic and Ostrogothic kingdoms. This settlement pattern evolution reflects changing economic strategies and increasing engagement with Mediterranean urban culture. The Gothic language represents the only substantially documented East Germanic language and provides crucial insights into the linguistic history of the Germanic language family. Through the monumental work of Bishop Wolfila and scattered later attestations, Gothic offers a unique window into the early development of Germanic languages and the cultural transformation of the Gothic peoples. The Gothic Bible stands as one of the most significant linguistic monuments of late antiquity. The translation was allegedly performed in Nicopolis ad Istrum in present-day northern Bulgaria, though recent scholarship suggests it was not the work of Wulfila alone, but rather a team of scholars working under his direction. To accomplish this translation, Wulfila invented the Gothic alphabet, a writing system specifically designed for the Gothic language. The alphabet was primarily based on Greek script, which provided the model for most letters, though it also incorporated elements from Latin and possibly Gothic runes. This new alphabet consisted of 27 letters and represented a sophisticated adaptation to the phonological needs of Gothic. The creation of this alphabet marked a revolutionary moment, the transformation of an oral Germanic culture into a literate one. Gothic belongs to the East Germanic branch of the Germanic language family, distinct from the North Germanic languages, ancestral to modern Scandinavian languages, and West Germanic languages, ancestral to English, German, and Dutch. Perhaps the most intriguing chapter in Gothic linguistic history is Crimean Gothic, a variety of the language that survived in isolated communities in Crimea until at least the 18th century. Our knowledge of Crimean Gothic comes primarily from a letter written by Flemish diplomat Ogier Giseline de Buzbeck in 1562, which preserves about 100 Gothic words along with their meanings. Crimean Gothic shows both continuities with and divergences from Biblical Gothic. While many words clearly derive from the same East Germanic source, others show significant differences. For instance, Crimean Gothic used bro for bread instead of Biblical Gothic halafs, and rinch for mountain instead of bergahe. The language also shows influence from other languages of the region, with Iranian loanwords for hundred, sada, and thousand, hazer, and possible Turkic influence in the numerals 11 to 19. In the end, the Goths' true legacy lies not in the romanticized image of barbarian conquerors, but in their remarkable demonstration of human adaptability.